Thanks to Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He has made us overcome. Yes, More than overcome yes, through Jesus Christ. Yes, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That even in the times of trouble and chaos, you keep us in the midst of the storm. Yes. Praise God. We thank you this morning for your blessings, for your favor, for your protection, and for the, for all that you want. In Jesus' name, everybody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Thank you, Izzy and uh, Lydia, for helping out with the singing. Great job. <laughs> Thank you, Tim. I'm always here to preach my message. Not our usual. Mike and Suzanne is always. Mike's getting a little of the uh, early morning Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. It just proves to you, see, he's outside of time. It's not a <laughs> more, more, more. Praise God. Mm -hmm. But anyway, thank you so much. And everybody there, he has them printed up back there, so you can get a copy if you want to have one. Uh, just a, it's a good thing, to, a good way to start the day off, kind of get you going mm -hmm. in the right direction. They have to be out of the and print them up or show them up here on the screen as well. So we'll be doing that too. Just a good reminder of what, of confessing the word. And so, praise the Lord. That's what God wants us to do. Agree with Him. Say what He says. Amen. Amen. So, I want to, uh, first of all, thank uh, all of our uh, military that are on active duty right now. To make these sacrifices, and uh, even the National Guard. I was so infuriated by the way they were treated in Washington. Oh, oh man. Men and women that uh, take time out of their schedules, out of their everyday life, mm -hmm. and offer to, they're like the minute men of today, right? Mm -hmm. And they have them sleeping on floors, and I mean, it was just despicable. Anyway, we need to honor them. And, yes. and I, I thank God for all the men and women that have served in the, our armed forces all the way back to the beginning. Yes. The sacrifices they've made. And yeah. So many of them giving their lives. Young, you know, as, as Dan said, a lot of them, in World War II especially, because they couldn't really track dates and birth. A lot of people didn't have birth certificates back then. And they were born out on the farm somewhere and, you know, without a doctor or hospital or anything else. And so these young boys, about 15, 16 years old with enlist, gave their lives. And, uh, mm. I would love to be able to have some of them interact with some of the 15, 16 year olds that are on the streets today so that they would know really what this is all about. And, uh, and these are just, a lot of these are just kids without, without direction. They just mm -hmm. never had the kind of leadership and parenting and so forth that they need, but, uh, but thank God for those that have, and, and we're just grateful. And I hope that everybody will take some time out over the holiday, over this weekend, long weekend. And just remember, uh, say a little prayer, and thank God for those men and women that have the courage to stand up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's a great, great time to remember uh, what this nation stands for, and in spite of the way it looks right now. It's still the best place on earth. Mm -hmm. yes. God has made it that way. Amen. Yes. So yes, we're thankful for, for that. I, I just think sometimes as chaotic and as messed up as things seem to be at times, we're in the world else but I don't want to be left or raise your family. It's, it's scary. But God knows the end from the beginning and mm -hmm. He's got us all in His hands. Amen. So praise God. Amen. God bless all of you for being here this morning. And uh, I'm going to go right to the Word of God. Amen. Amen. I, I mentioned, uh, I think it was uh, last week or whenever it was, but God's been dealing with me about really acknowledging Him, being aware of His presence mm -hmm. and how He's used to influence our lives. And this has been a personal thing, so I'm not putting this on anybody else, but I think He's dealing with everybody. It just, you know, and, mm -hmm. Uniquely to each one of us, the way he does. 
But uh, for me, it's just been this, this just overwhelming hunger to really be one with him and be conscious of that all the time. And I don't mean this in a freaking religious way. I, I mean, God knows me. That's not going to happen that way. So he, but, but to just understand him and be able to relate to his presence in my life all the time, how that can impact not only me, but people that I come into contact as well. So I just... And I was up praying, and I, I do every morning early, and uh, I was asking for it. I said, how? I mean, how am I supposed to do this? I know this is kind of like abstract thought. It's hard for me to get it down into my thinking. I mean, I get it in the spirit. I feel it, the, the unction and the desire. I don't know how to make this a reality in my, in my own mind. So the other night, uh, we'd gone to bed, and, you know, we usually have a TV on, we'll watch or something, and we'll anyway, for a while. And, I was just before I went to sleep and the Lord spoke to me and he said, love. And I knew immediately what he was talking about, this connection. And uh, I thought scripture started coming to my mind. I didn't have it all sorted out. In fact, when I started, after that, the next day, I started going through scriptures that had come to my mind that night, trying to put things together, trying to figure out what it is that you're really trying to tell me. And it got more confusing than it was before. But it wouldn't go away, so I knew it was the Lord. He just kept on saying that mm. over and over to me. And over a uh, course of a week or so, uh, I kind of put some things together that I feel like God was talking to me about. And I believe it's for the church, too. I mentioned it uh, just in, basically just in passing at the Bible study, because we were all talking about different things and so forth. And that was you know, kind of dominating, like next it has been for the last few weeks. But, uh, so I, I, I have some things that I think God is speaking to me, and I think it's good for all of us. Generally, uh, and we see it all the time, in, when people are witnessing, and somebody says something, you go, oh, okay, you know, he's been talking to me about that too, and, or in, maybe in a little bit different way, but just like, uh, again, things Rita said, things Suzanne said, things that uh, Tammy said, and how they connect, you know, where God's dealing with somebody else about that. And it's just a way of him making it clear to us mm -hmm. in our mind that it already is in our heart, you know, in our spirit. So yeah. I'm just grateful for that. And I'm I'm grateful that people do a lot of times we're a little bit hesitant to do that. You know, you can even kind of tell that this morning, is there anybody else? Is there anybody else? And nobody's saying anything, mm -hmm. you know. And then all of a sudden somebody will speak. And then all of a sudden it's like it gives license to everybody else. And it, okay, so Maybe this is worth it, you know, sharing with somebody. And it is, and it's valuable because you don't know who that's going to touch. You don't know who that's going to have a, a, a really powerful impact on. So we need to be willing to. I was thinking a little uh, of Izzy being you know, up here singing. She's scared of getting in front of people. And that's not unusual. Sounds like the beginning of a book. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, no pressure. I just. I just feel it's just, uh, I'm not saying I'm old, I'm just saying, it just seems, to me it seems presumptuous. I mean, for me to write a book. And not only that, if I were to really write a book, it would be rated Z. I think. <laughs> but anyway, we'll see what God does with that. But anyway, I was thinking of Izzy, she was up here singing, and she really wanted to do this. <clears throat> She's, she's afraid to get up in front of people. I was the same way when I was a kid. I can remember being at my grandparents for the, during the summer one year. I was probably about, I mean, maybe a little bit younger than her, but she's 10, so. Uh, and we went, they, they went to a Methodist church and we went to Bible school. And uh, we, you know how Bible school is. At the end of the Bible school, you always have a little program or something, and they wanted us to say a scripture. You had to memorize the scripture. Well, I, I just didn't like being in front of people at all. You know, I was just really paranoid, nervous to be in front of people. So I can remember just, it was horrible. And of course, I memorized it. I could repeat it to everybody until I got up on the stage. But then it was like I had somebody else's head on. You know, I just, I couldn't do it at all. I was freaked out totally and embarrassed and, and the whole thing. So I understand how she feels, but I was just proud of her to have the courage to get up and do it anyway, despite the fear. Amen. That's really what this is all about for, for everybody. We just do it afraid sometimes, mm -hmm. and God just honors yes. that and blesses us. So, Amen. Anyway, praise the Lord so much Amen. for Grandpa, but we'll move on. Have a great day. <laughs>
Thank the Lord. All right, let's go uh, 1 John chapter 4, uh, verses 16 and 17. 1 John 4, verse 16 and 17. Praise God. God is good. Amen. He's so patient. And I'm telling you, well, I won't tell you. We'll never get out of here. Hallelujah. We have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love. Yes. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. So it's, it's through this, this love that the Father gave birth to the Son, to Jesus. And it's the same way that the Holy Spirit maintains this fellowship between the Father and the Son. Between God the Father and God the Son. And we know, we understand this is one, but we're still talking about when Jesus was here, he had to deal with that spirit, he had to cooperate with that spirit of man. So it's, uh, we're now the sons of God. Yes. There's no gender specific here. It's kind of like the new, uh, <laughs> the, uh, the new age that we're living in. No, it isn't anything like that, I'm just saying that. <laughs> God doesn't see us as male and female. He sees us as his children. Praise the Lord. So he speaks to us as sons. Amen. Amen. So we're the sons of God. He was the firstborn among many brethren. Amen. So God is love. And the word uh, God is love is used twice here in the, the fourth chapter of 1 John in verse 8. And then again in verse 16 what we just read. And what, But what do they mean? I mean that's what... I guess I was asking myself for what God was asking me. If I want love, I have to seek God. If I want real love, if I want genuine love, I have to seek the Lord. Yep. Because love is the very nature of God. It's, yes. it's who He is, it's what He is. Because it doesn't say that God has love, it says that God is love. Yes. And the love that we need is God Himself. Yes. His love. Yes. His love to us and in us as an act of His grace. The love of heaven, which is, uh, heaven is eternity. I mean, you know what I'm saying? It's just outside of time. It's, it's, it has no space, time limits, or any of that sort of thing. So, it's love, that love that's of heaven, or love that's of eternity, is a love that lasts. It's a love that's not of humans or of flesh, but it's the love that is God. Yes. John 13, verse 35. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you have love one to another. Well, that's great, except the church has become more about contention and division than it has anything else. Mm -hmm. Verse 37 and 38. Peter said unto him, Lord, why cannot I follow thee now? I'll lay down my life for thy sake. And Jesus answered him, Wilt thou lay down thy life for my sake? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, the cock shall not crow till thou hast denied me thrice. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. I really thought, Tim, you were just going to go ahead. I was just going to fold it up and run out the back door and say, just listen to Tim. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. But when God created Adam, he gave him self-life. Yes. Right? He, we have the right to make decisions and choices. We're not like angels. We, we have free will. And so God gave Adam this, this self-life. Well, why? So that Adam could bring that self-life to God to be filled with God's life. It, it had to be a choice. But Adam turned away from God and that self-life closed him off to God, to, to the intimacy with God. And that, that's the corruption that humanity actually inherited from Adam, is self. Self-consciousness, self-awareness. Amen. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. What is it? It's all of a sudden, now I know what I'm doing wrong. I, I, I know wrong from right. Self. 
Before that, he was so into God and so much, God was so much in him that he wasn't even conscious of sin. He wasn't conscious of right or wrong. It was just God and me. But mostly God, right? He, in fact, I don't think he could tell the difference between him and God. Yeah. They were one. Now, we know we have the metaphorical, you know, uh, analogies and so forth where it talks about God walking with him, but I think there's, there's far more personal things going on there than, than a physical God coming to a physical man and then walking. There was, this was just an awareness, a consciousness of mm -hmm. his being connected and being mm -hmm. one with God. Right. So, if self is the cause of failure, then it follows that nothing less than death, the death to self, is what has to happen for us to be alive to God. There it is. Look at Matthew chapter, this is fascinating to me anyway, Matthew chapter 16, verse uh, 15 through 18. Matthew 16, verse 15 through 18. And so Jesus is speaking, we all know this story, but he says, he saith unto them, but whom say ye that I am? Because everybody's saying, well, he's Elijah, he's this, he's that, he's the other. So he asked his disciples, he said, who, who do you think that I am? Who do you say I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, blessed art thou Simon Barjona, because that was his name, not Simon Peter. That's, they're using that just to help us understand who he's talking to. But he says, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So Jesus, first thing he says is, You're not Simon, you're Peter. And I, what the Lord said to me is, You're not going to find the real you Till you find me. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Wow. That's right. God has a, we all have a new yes. name in heaven. Yes. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is. It doesn't really matter at this point. But, but God is saying there's, a, there's an identity that you don't even understand. Mm -hmm. And it's me. Yes. That's how you find yourself. Yes. So death to self in order for the love of God to live in us. And only the love of God coming in will cast out self. Mm -hmm. There's only one cure for self, and that's death. Mm -hmm. And I know about self being selfish. Mm -hmm. That's where the drugs, that's where the multiple relationships and all these things in my own personal life happen. Because I was so desperate to know who I was or promote myself in some way or another, even though I was bashful and rather shy in a lot of ways, there was something in me that wanted control, that wanted to be in charge. But God alone is the death of self. That's why Jesus is so freeing. That's why he says, there's liberty. We, we get delivered from ourselves, from all of our anxieties, from all of our freakouts, from all of our doubts and, and fears, and, and all the things that promote and cause us to do the stupid things we do as human beings. You know, it's like, it's like the old schoolyard bully. He's usually the biggest coward in the school. And because he's afraid, he has to always be screaming and charging and threatening and so on and so forth. Why? Because he has such self-doubt about his own manliness or his own manhood that he has to try to intimidate everybody else mm -hmm. to cower before. It's like I told that story so many times but it fascinated me when I saw that movie where uh, I think it's Robert Redford and, and he's this mountain man and they, they're riding along him and this other mountain man that had they just kind of come in to run into each other and this bunch of Indians come up on him. Well, the, the mountain man that was riding with him had some scouts. And he slipped them over onto Robert Redford's saddle 
because he didn't know if these Indians were friends of the Indians that he had scouted. So he just stuck them on his saddle. And the Indian comes up, and the Indian's riding around, and he's looking at those scouts, and he rides around and around the head of this group of Indians, and he's, he's yelling. I mean, he's just screaming. He's right, he's this close to him, but he's screaming and hollering, and Robert Redford's kind of trying to figure out what's going on, what's he freaking out about here. And he looks to the other guy who can speak the language, and he says, what? What's he yelling about? And he said, he's scared of you. And he said, why? And he said, he pointed at the scouts. Well, those scouts were enemies of theirs. The, of this Indian group. And it just epitomizes this mentality. This Indian is screaming and hollering and acting like he's really, you know, ah, 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 ah. and the guy understood. The reason he's screaming is because he's afraid of you and he's trying to keep you from doing to him what you did to these people, right? <laughs> and it's like the bully. It's like, you see a lot of times the people that are always ranting and raving and screaming and hollering are so insecure and, and have so much self-doubt that they feel like they have to project this image that I'm in charge, I've got control. And, and the fact is, they're the weakest person in the room. I think that would go a long way to our politicians. Oh, yeah. Oh, buddy. Oh, Amen. 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 You know, God, He allowed Christ to die on the cross. And then when Christ had died, he raised him up, right? Yeah. We have to have grace to give ourselves up. Mm. It, takes, it takes courage to let go of me mm. and let God. First thought I had when I was praying was saying, God, I want, to, I want to be less and I want you to be more. Do whatever, you, do whatever you've got to do for you to dominate my life. And i got to tell you, as I was saying it, I was afraid. I was thinking, in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, now what? <laughs> what kind of control are you giving him? You know, I mean, what might he do to make this happen? And at the very time I'm thinking that, God's, God was speaking to me at the same time, saying, well, you have to be afraid. Right. If I'm loved, yes. whatever I do, mm. it's going to be the best thing you could have yeah. could have been yeah. to you. So Amen. Amen. Even though in the natural it might not seem that way. You know what I'm saying? And a peace came over me. It really did. And I have felt this for weeks now because of that. Mm -hmm. He's got grace to give up ourselves to Him. Yes. He's given us the grace to be able yes. to do it. Yes. Remember, God is love. Mm -hmm. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 through 6. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace are ye saved. And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. The scripture says that God will quicken us, or he'll make us alive from the dead. Yes. And he does it by grace through faith. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, now if you can get this simile here. Jesus was born in Bethlehem in a similar way as we're born into the Holy Spirit when we get mm -hmm. born again. Right? God overshadowed Mary. And so, the Holy Spirit. But Christ had to be born again the second time. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a connection here that we don't always see. His natural birth was like our rebirth. But then he had to be born again as well. He had to be tried. He had to be tempted. He had to be tested. He had to, he had to develop perfection. Right? The scripture says, Tim was talking about him coming to the, or somebody was talking about that this morning, him going to the temple. His parents wondering where he was. Right? And he said he, he had to be about his father's business. Right. And the scripture says that he grew in knowledge and stature, yes. he, had, he had to be developed as a person. How he was going to react, how he was going to respond to these things. Yes. 
So he had to go through all these things. He had to be tempted. He had to be tried. He had to go through the testings. He had to go through what humans go through. Mm -hmm. And out of the grave, after he had died, after God allowed him to be crucified, when he was in this hopeless, this helpless, this, this dark death, yeah. God raises him up. Mm -hmm. Gives him new life. Yeah. So Christ's birth in Bethlehem is, is the likeness of our new birth. But look at Colossians 1, 18. He's the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have preeminence. Mm -hmm. Now that may not, and here's what, what goes through my mind, that may not just be physical death. Right. There's a, I'll, I'll get ahead of myself, but the birth of Jesus from the grave is the likeness and the promise of the full birth where the power of death and the life of Christ comes to us at the same time. Where we know what it is to be dead with Christ and risen with Him. Mm. Dead to self, made alive to God. Mm. Am I making any sense yes. to anybody? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I know what I'm thinking, but... Yep. Alright, look at Ephesians chapter 3, 19 and 20. Ephesians 3, 19 and 20. And to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, mm -hmm. according to the power that works in us. So it's something that passes knowledge for something that's above what we yes. can think. It's God doing something supernatural. Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I think... Look, I don't want to be arrogant, but I think that's part. This is part of what we're, God is dealing with us right now. Exactly. Yes. It's more than just this feeling that I need to get up early and pray, or that God is wanting to talk to me. It's God pulling us into Himself, yes. asking yes. us to die. To look, the reason we got the problems we've got today is because Christians yeah. did not stand up and be counted. Mm -hmm. We were living the good life. I'm, I'm saying me. I'm talking about me. We, we had it pretty good. Yeah. We didn't have to worry about everything that we were going to eat or clothes to wear or automobiles to drive. And not in war. We had kids growing up and we had to enjoy family and all of this stuff. And God, we still love God, but we didn't have to really be focused on Him because everything's pretty good. I didn't have to cry out, God, what are we going to do? Right? Right. And I think that's part of what we're experiencing now is God is saying, look, I didn't bring this crap on you, but I'm going to use it. That's right. I'm going to make it work out for your good. I'm going to bring it to something that will cause you to a positive yes. outcome from this, no matter how much the devil meant it for evil. Right. And the only thing I can do to make this a reality is to get you into me and me into you. Less of you and more of me. Yes. You know? Amen. So, God raises him up yeah. from the grave at his most helpless and hopeless point. Mm -hmm. So what, what, what should we expect? That's a rhetorical question. Mm -hmm. Jesus yes. is what we should expect. Jesus himself. Yes. The work of God the Father. Now think about this. The work of God the Father is to what? Beget the Son. Yes. That's the whole part. That's what everything has been leading to since Genesis, since the fall. Yes. Everything else that God's been doing. Now we see all the other things going on, but the point, the truth is, everything is leading to a, a, a the fullness of time, yes. Yes. and that fullness of time is God begetting yes. a son yes. that God would come in the flesh. Yes. Amen. So that's the work of God. That's what that's what God's all about. But here's the deal. That goes on for eternity. Yes. You know, even in the millennium, even when we have, we'll have glorified bodies, mm -hmm. 
We'll be the last one to glorify us. Mm -hmm. There'll be human beings that are like us today yeah. without sin that will live forever. Yeah. The way it was supposed to be back in the very beginning with Adam. They're going to have to be born again. Jesus. Praise the Lord. Yeah. And if you don't believe that, when Satan is loosed, he's going to draw some of them away. Right, mm -hmm. right. Until, until he is ultimately defeated and there is no temptation for them, but they still have to believe God. They're still going to have to be born again. I believe that. Yep. Because this God is eternal. Mm -hmm. He doesn't change. That's right. And if his purpose was to beget sons, beginning with Jesus as the firstborn, then for eternity, that's what he's going to be doing. Yes. Praise the Lord. The scripture talks about Eternal generations. Right. Eternal inheritances. We, we, uh, Psalms 12, 7 talks about it, but we'll look, look at, uh, just for the sake of time, Isaiah 51 and 8 refers to it too. It's a little cryptic because that isn't the way we normally think, but that's when you start thinking in that direction, it's like when the Holy Ghost shows you a little thing and everything starts making sense when you see it, right? Mm -hmm. But he said, for the moth shall eat them up like a garment, the worm shall eat them like wool. But my righteousness shall be forever, and my salvation from generation yes. to generation. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. For eternity. Hebrews 9.15. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death... For the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Yes. Praise the Lord. Eternal inheritance. So what's eternity? It's ever going on. It's always happening. Mm -hmm. It's an ever-present now. Mm. Yeah. And the one work of God the Father is to beget the Son. Mm -hmm. So I expect God to give this indwelling Christ to anyone who's going to receive it in a power that they've never known before. Hallelujah. Come on. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 3.17 That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love. Yes. Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. Yes. So you will be yes. rooted and grounded in love. That's a continuous yes. statement, being rooted and grounded yes. in love. Yes. Praise the Lord. Look at Ephesians 3.19 now, in light of that. And to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you might be filled yes. all. with all the fullness of God. All, yes. all the fullness yes. of God. Yes. Yes. That's what we need. Yes. That's what we should expect. Yes. Yes. God has got, listen, God has nothing for us but Jesus. Mm. Amen. Right? Yes. In Him. Is our righteousness. In Him is our healing. In Him is our deliverance. In Him is our prosperity. In Him is everything. All the yes. thing God has for us is Christ. Yes. Because He's everything. Yes. He's all in all. Romans 6, verses 3 through 5. I've got quite a few scriptures, but I just want this to make sense. I don't want it to sound like it's just some random thought that came to me. I, God puts everything together. He has a way of making things fit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he uses his word. That's the thing that... Amen. It's inerrant. Amen. So know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ, look at this, were baptized into his death. Mm -hmm. Yes. Therefore we're buried with him by baptism unto death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so also should we walk in newness of life. Now, where did Jesus go when he was resurrected? Right to the Father. He is now the Father. Yes. As he was before he was born. Yes. Yes. He's one. Yes. He and the Father are one. Yes. 
What is he saying to us? We got the same thing when we got born again. Mm -hmm. We died to that human. Mm -hmm. And we were made God again, made one yes. with God again. We were in yes. Christ before the foundation of the world. Yes. Yes. We're just back where we were originally. But the problem is, unless we understand that intellectually as well as spiritually, we still stumble around yeah. thinking this is it. And we got to wait for God to come and give me a blessing or God come and you know, heal me or God come and do this. And he's saying, no, you, you have everything. Yes. yes. Yep. You just need to be conscious of your oneness with God. And the only way you can do that is you've got to die to yourself. You really have to identify with that death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Yes. And not just when we go to, off to, into eternity. Because right. as far as God's concerned, we're already in yes. eternity. Yes. yes. We're seated with Him in heavenly places. Come on. Therefore, we're, back, we're buried with Him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. What's the newness of life? We're back with God. Yes. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 3.19 again. It almost seems arrogant. You know, it almost seems like we're saying... Blasphemy. But isn't that exactly what Jesus was charged with? Yes. I am my father. He said, I only say what I why? Because he was so closely identifying with the Father. Yes. That it sounded like blasphemy only because of their ignorance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He was just telling them the truth, but they had missed it because of religion for so long they didn't understand it. Right. <clears throat> and to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge. Yes. yes. This experience yes. that Jesus had is what yes. we're having. Yeah. To have it that we might be what? Filled with the fullness of God. Mm -hmm. That's what God is saying to me. Yeah. I'm saying, God, I, I gotta have more of you. I, I want to, you know, like John, I must decrease that you yes. can increase. Yes. I, I gotta I I can't dominate this anymore. It's gotta be you. Yes. Then you got to die. Jesus, the only way he could save us is to go back to his original position mm -hmm. as God. Yes. So he let his he died to man, to the humanity, to the perfect human. But nevertheless, he had to die to that reality in order for him to rule as God and to give us the same opportunity. And I, look, here's the thing. This covers everything. Yes. This is the reason we don't see consistency in miracles. This is why we're not laying hands on the sick and seeing everybody recover. It's why we're not raising the dead. It's why we're not doing a lot of things because there's still too, too damn much of us. Yes. Right. Come on. And look, to die to yourself, it's, it's not like we have thought. It's not like I'm going to give up a bunch of stuff. No. Everything is gain. Everything is positive. Yes. Every, whatever I can get rid of in, uh, of me is only an increase. Come on. Amen. I'm still here. I mean, well, I, again, we'll get, uh, I get ahead of myself. But to know the love of Christ that passes knowledge. In other words, intellectually, we're not going to get this right. through reason. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It has to come by the Spirit. Right. It has to come from the resurrection spirit. So that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Who, who would not want that? That's a believer. Mm. Yes. That's right. Oh, so when Jesus lives in us, we're filled with love to all the fullness of God. That's the potential. What God does is strengthen us wow. mightily yes. by the Holy Spirit. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's how come Jesus was able to do everything he was able to do. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. He, he said, I, I, it's not me. Mm -hmm. It's the Father. It's the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Guess what? That's the Father. He's invisible. No man has seen him. God is love. 
Love is the omnipotent God. Yes. Love is the life and the glory of God. So Romans 5.5. 5. Hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts mm -hmm. by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. The Holy Spirit comes to give us yes. God. He is God. Yes. Yes. And the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by Him. Yes. We have such a distorted definition of love. And I'm not saying it's wrong that we love one another, our family, our, our spouses, our children, and so forth. I'm just saying it's so small. Yes. Right? Yes. Oh, it's my so limited mm -hmm. in comparison. Mm -hmm. I mean, he can't be tries to tell us, you that are evil, give good gifts to your children. Right. I mean, you love your children, don't you? But you have no idea much more the so. depth, the height, the width, and the breadth of my life. Yes. yes. As much as you love your family, as much as you love your children, as much as you would give yourself for them, you still have no concept. Right. We have no concept of this love. This love is power. Yes. This love is a spiritual force. It's not just a feeling. In fact, it's not a feeling at all. It's power. It's God Himself. Yes. John 17, verse 26. I'll tell you what, it'll make you want to go home to be with the Lord. I want to live my life. I want to live every bit of it that I can live because I've got family, I've got children, grandchildren. I want to see them grow up. I want to see them, their life. But I'll tell you what, I've never been less afraid of dying than I am today. Because it ain't dying, folks. Yes. It's just oh, a little separation. Yeah. Right here, Lord. Right here. Praise God. <laughs> I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me <clears throat> may be in them, and I in them. Yes. It sounds confusing unless you understand we're talking about the same. Right. Mm -hmm. We're talking about God. This is Paul talking. I declare unto them my name, and will declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I am in. Paul is telling them this. He, he isn't talking about Paul, but Paul is telling them this. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. And Paul, his experience is much like many of us. Now I'm saying. I understand this is the book of John, so don't think I'm confused here. I'm just saying Paul identified with this. Mm -hmm. And his experience, Paul's, was just like most of ours. Mm -hmm. If you look at Romans 7, verse 18. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, Dwelleth no good thing. For the will is present. For to want to do the right, right, is present with me. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. Man, if that is the story of my life, it's in me to want to always do the right thing, to always want to be good, to always want to be godlike or godly. How? When this thing wants to dominate. Yeah. When it wants to get angry, it, it wants to retaliate, it wants to get even, it wants to escape and get high or get drunk or just, just not have to deal with it, you know? Yeah. That's just human right there. Right. And Paul understood it completely. Mm -hmm. So we need to come to the same conclusion that Paul came to. He figured it out. Mm -hmm. When I want to do good, I do, I do just the opposite. And the harder I try, I've used that old cliche many times, but the harder I try, the better to be, the worse I am. Yes. 
But look at Galatians 2, 18 and 21. And I believe this is Paul saying, I finally got this thing figured out. For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. Mm -hmm. For I through the law am dead to the law, that I might live unto God. Yes. I am crucified with Christ. Yes. Nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So he's just simply saying what I'm saying. You have to die. Because mm -hmm. the harder I try to get this thing to do what it should do, the more I fail. Yes. It's when I die that this thing, quit thinking about it, think of what grace really is about. Yes. Is to bring us to the place where we're no longer judging and critiquing and you know measuring and all this stuff. It's just dead. Just die to it. Mm -hmm. Christ has crucified you with him. Yes. It's no longer me that lives. It's Adam again. Yeah. The second act. Mm -hmm. It's back to the garden. It's back to the place where I have no knowledge of good or evil. <coughs> it's God. All I know is God. In John 14, 20, Jesus said, At that day, you'll know that I'm in my Father. And I am you. Yes. <clears throat> There's a day for all of us. A time, a, a space, a place somehow that we come to the knowledge that that same thing that he had is what we have. Yes, yes. Lord. Mm -hmm. It's God. Second Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20. See, I... How could I how could I know me if I don't know him? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Because I am him. Yes. And I know that sounds like I'm stretching this, but that, that's uh, I'm not saying I'm God the Creator. I'm saying I and He are one. That's what Jesus said. He thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Yeah. Because it's the only thing that's going to get us to where we're supposed to be. Yes. Mm -hmm. But humbling himself, he became flesh so that he could get us to that place where we wouldn't count it robbery to be equal with God. Yes. <clears throat> For all the promises of God in him are yea, and in him, amen, mm -hmm. unto the glory of God by us. By yes. us. By us. So all the, all the word of God, all the promises of God, all the healings, all the deliverance, all the prosperity, all the protection, all the provision, everything, all those promises in Jesus are yes and amen. He's everything. That's what all yes. God gives us is Jesus. Yes. Yep. Unto the glory of God by us. Yes. Mm -hmm. We show God. We reveal God. Mm -hmm. The, what, the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them. You know, obviously Jesus walked with supernatural. And he walked in the love and the power of God. He, he was the word made flesh. And by his word, his promises, we can do the very same thing. Mm -hmm. We are heirs, joint heirs with Christ. Mm -hmm. The more we love, the more conscious we are of the God of love. And the less self lives. The less self, the more God. The less self, the more love. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 59, verse 16 and 21. And he saw that there was no man, and he wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore his arm brought salvation unto him, and his righteousness, it sustained him. 
For he put on righteousness as a breastplate and a helmet of salvation upon his head. And he put on the garments of vengeance for clothing and was clad with zeal as a cloak. According to their deeds, accordingly he will repay fury to his adversaries, recompense to his enemies, to the islands he will repay recompense. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against them. Amen. And the Redeemer shall come to Zion, and unto them that turn from transgression in Jacob, saith the Lord. And that's just the flesh. Jacob is just self. Right. That's why his name was changed to Israel. Mm -hmm. As for me, this is my covenant with them, saith the Lord. My spirit that is upon thee, and my words which I have put in thy mouth, shall not depart out of thy mouth, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, yes. nor out of the mouth of thy seed, yes. saith yes. the Lord, yes. and yes. for them forever. Yes. Inheritance, mm -hmm. generations, right? Yes. yes. From henceforth and forever. Yes. So, we watched this video. Wednesday night was fascinating. It was really cool. And it was about how God creates man and, and, and the armor, obviously, in Ephesians 6 being the armor of God. I think everybody knows it's the armor of God. It says it's the armor of God, but understanding how that when we put it on, the enemy can't tell us from God. Right. What is the armor of God? It's believing. Yes. It's the reality. Yes. Look, and, and so here he tells us, this is, this is, he puts on the helmet of salvation. He puts on the breastplate of righteousness. This is God he's talking about. Jesus. It's prophetic. But look at Ephesians 6, 13 through 18. Because that armor of God belongs to us now. Right? It's our armor. Yes. Why? Because we're one with God. Yes. It's not a hand-me-down. It's not Big Brother's clothes. It's your clothes. It, it belongs to you. So as for me, this is my covenant with them, saith the Lord, my spirit that is upon me, and my words which I am. Okay, let's go to Ephesians now, chapter 6, verse 13 to 18. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, why? Because now it's yours. It belongs to you. Right. That you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, take on the shield of faith, wherewith you be, shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Pray always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for the saints. Mm -hmm. And when we do that, we get Ephesians 6.10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. When we Look like God, we act like God. Yes. When we act like God, we do what God does. Yes. Yes. Amen. And the devil cannot stop us. It's only when we come, revert back to self. Well, I don't know what I'm going to do about this. And oh God, how am I going to handle this? And oh, start confessing all these things that God has said we have already overcome. We identify ourselves as not God. Yep. And that's when the enemy attacks. Yep. Mm. But Jesus, he attacked Jesus, right? Our mm. older brother. Right. If you're the son of God, if this, if that, he was questioning him. He was doing the same thing that the enemy did to Adam. Yep. Get him to doubt his identity. Get him to doubt who he is. Get him to yeah. give me a word that I can manipulate and twist on you. And all Jesus would use is the word of God. Yes. Right. Yep. Yep. And the devil had to flee. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Because he knew, I'm dealing with God here. Mm -hmm. And believe me, the devil knows. He can't whip God. That's right. He doesn't have a chance against God. Yeah. Strong in the Lord. Yes. And in the power of his might. Yes. 
The greatest weapon at our disposal is Romans 5 5, the love of God shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. That's God's power. Yes. The Holy Spirit Himself yes. has entered into our hearts, God Himself. And we have the capacity to house the love of God Himself. Yes. yes. And that gives us the right and the privilege to a zero failure rate. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just like Jesus. Yes. Amen. Not one word. Anything other than that, we're not operating at our full potential. Come on. Amen. When Adam sinned in the garden, God's nature, which was, it's, it's, it's agape, it's, it's used two different terms, but it means the favor and loving kindness is God's nature. Favor and loving kindness. Grace. Yes. And loving times. When it had him sin, that was no longer part of his nature. That's what he lost, because he lost God. He lost that <coughs> oneness with God. But even though man's commitment to God faith, God's favor and loving kindness and mercy never failed. It produced Jesus. Mm -hmm. God gave himself up. Yes. It was his favor, his grace, his love, his mercy that caused him to take on human form and give that life for us. Yes. So he never, he never stopped loving man. He never stopped the mercy and the grace and the favor because that's what produced Jesus. Mm -hmm. That's right. Wow. Isaiah 54, verse 10. I told a long time ago, I think I told you this, when we were in Texas right after I got received the Holy Spirit, we were living in a little house out in the country, and I was praying one night, and I was actually in Allison's bedroom, which Allison rarely slept in because she was usually in our bed. She was just a little preschool at the time, but I was in that bedroom praying, and the Lord spoke to me, and he said, Isaiah 54. Now, I, I got, I'm telling you God's honest truth, and he knows this to be true. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know there was an Isaiah before. <laughs> I didn't know the Bible. I mean, I knew a little bit about the Gospels only because as a little kid, you know, we read the stories from Mark, Matthew, Luke, and John, and so forth. But I didn't know. I didn't know there was an Isaiah before. I had to go get a Bible and find it. And since that time, I've read it over and over, trying to figure out, okay, what is it you're giving me? You know, what is it you're telling me? In Isaiah 54. Well, this is again part of it. He said, For the mountains will depart, the hills will be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from thee. Neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed, saith the Lord that has mercy on thee. Verse 14 through 17. In righteousness shalt thou be established. Thou shalt be far from oppression, for thou shalt not fear, and from terror, for it shall not come near thee. Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fall for thy sake. Mm -hmm. You see, this is personal. Yeah. It's personal for you. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's not just God writing a bunch of stuff down about people that lived 2,000 years ago or something, or three or 4,000 years ago. He's talking to us. Mm -hmm. He was speaking to me. He's telling me, here, this is, this is my promise to you, buddy. I created the smith that blows the coals in the fire and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work, and I created the waster to destroy. Come on. But no weapon that's formed against you will prosper. Every tongue that shall rise against you in judgment, you will condemn. Yes. This is the heritage of the servants, or the, in our case, the children of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And their righteousness is of me. Yes. Save God. Yes. This, all this junk going on should inspire us to one thing. And that's to trust God more. Yes, yes, yes. And not be intimidated, not be frightened, not be freaked out mm -hmm. by what the devil. These are the darts of the enemy. Yes. Mm -hmm. These are the accusations of the enemy. Oh, boy. Mm -hmm. These are the weapons formed against us. Mm -hmm. But they cannot touch you. That's right. Mm -hmm. This is a heritage covenant. Yes. 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 
generation to generation to generation. That's the gospel. The love of God. For God so loved the world. And the gospel is the power of God. Love. For God so loved the world. The mystery that was hidden in God is now in us. What the scripture say? Christ in you. The hope of glory. Or the hope of a revealing of God. Yes. When we choose to walk in his love, then as he is, so are we yes. in this world. Mm -hmm. So love isn't a feeling, it's a person. <coughs> love is a spiritual force. And no demon in hell can defeat us when we live by the power of God's love. Mm -hmm. 2 Corinthians 1, verse 20 through 22. 2 Corinthians 1, 20 through 22. I'm about to wrap up here. A few more scriptures. 2 Corinthians 1, 20 through 22. For all the promises of God in Him are yea and in Him, amen, under the glory of God by us. Mm -hmm. yes. This is what we just read. Right. Now He would establish us with you in Christ and hath anointed us is God, yes. who hath also sealed us yes. and given the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. Yes, Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Can't be undone. Right. Amen. Colossians 3, verses 3 and 4. <clears throat> For you are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Yes. Amen. This is the life. This is full fellowship or full oneness with God. Amen. Who is love. Yes. Ephesians 1, 17 through 19. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. That's what he's trying to do with me. That's, what, that's the thing that got me started here recently, seeking after him. And lots of stuff. I can tell you some things. I won't simply because it would make me look like a bad person. <laughs> I mean, God's done some things in me over the last couple of months. And it's just simply been to force me to, to search for him. Yes. Mm -hmm. It was weird. It started when I got sick at Easter. Mm -hmm. Don't know what it was. It wasn't, you know, but I told God it was awful. Don, you talked about having some similar symptoms, you know, it was just, you know, and the diarrhea and the whole thing, just without getting too uh, descriptive. It was awful. It lasted, that part lasted 24 hours, continuous for 24 hours. And then I was just exhausted. And all I did was lay, drink some water and, and ginger ale, and think. I wasn't afraid of dying. I had no concept of that. It wasn't like I was afraid I was going to die. I just knew it was some bug, and it was just sickening. And I, it affected me in a way that I never get sick like that. I've I haven't been sick like that since I was a little kid. But it forced me to kind of just have time to do nothing. Thing. I didn't have, I, I called Suzanne or had, I think Sally did or something to, to preach, so I didn't have to prepare a message. I didn't have to be focused on any one thing. And I never, I can't say, I never had any real, you know, like revelation or epiphany or something, but it just, from that point on, when I got back on my feet three days later after not eating or drinking or anything, or eating or I was drinking water or ginger ale. But not eating anything for those three Now, Not because I was wanting to fast, it was just I just didn't want to eat because I didn't want to do what I'd been doing. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really have an appetite, so it was good. But when I got back up, something had changed. Yeah. I'm serious. Mm -hmm. Something had changed. I, I was thinking differently. I was, I, was, I was serious about things that I had kind of let mm -hmm. just idle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come on. And I think Sally will tell you, I'm, I'm not a wonderful guy, a perfect husband, but something's changed. She knows that there's, and I'm not trying to put on a show, I'm not trying to act 
This is real. This is something that God is doing. Yes. And I think he's doing it in yes. all of us. Yes. Amen. You, I could make the analogy of the three days and risen. I never even actually thought about that until I just heard Mike say it. Mm. But I know something in me died. Yes. And something in me came alive. Yes. Come forth. Mm. Come forth. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who liveth in me. So time just... I don't know. I'm just. I'm just saying. I'm not trying to build myself up here, and make you think something special about me. I'm just saying something happened that caused me to reevaluate some things, and I think that's where all of us are. Yes. I think right. that's the thing yes. that we're, the unction, the thing yes. that we're feeling. It may have, it may be different for each one of us because we're all different. Our, the way we think, the way we interact, and so forth. But there's a hunger, there's a something going on in all of us that tells us, that's telling us, this, these times are different. There's yes. something different about yes. this time. Yes. And it isn't just because we're older or because of the COVID. There's something different. Yes. Yes. There's Without some doubt. spiritual force yes. that we're that. witnessing or that's, that we're sensing. Yes. Yeah. The stirring is that's causing us, yes. and it, it may affect all of us differently. For me, maybe I had to have the punch in the head. I, I'm dense. I'm. I'm I'm stubborn. I needed something that would just really get my attention. Hopefully you're not that way, but I am. I get on a track and sound to tell you, I, I'm disciplined. And I'm not saying that in a braggadocious way. I'm saying it's almost a negative. Because I just do things a certain way, and I always do them that way, and I do them every day that way. Part of it's the military part. It's just the way I was raised as a kid. It's just discipline. It's just it. And so God has to really get a hold of me because it's hard to get me out of a routine, out of a, a way of doing things. And I think that's why it happened the way it happened for me. It, it, was a, it was like the wake-up call. It was like, hey, things are different, man. You can't just keep doing things the way you've been doing and think you're going to get a different result. You're going to have to move as I move. You're going to have to work with me. And so I'm trying to figure out, and I'm not saying I figured it out. I'm just saying, I, I, every morning I'm saying, God, I, I need you. I need revelation. I need some understanding. I need some direction. I don't know what it is. I just want you to know that I'm willing. Yes. Uh, yes. You will help me to understand. Yes. Yeah. And so the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of His calling, what the riches of the glory of His inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of His power to us who believe. According to yes. the working of his mighty power. Thank you, Jesus. Now Ephesians 3, 16 through 20. That he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. Mm -hmm. That you, being rooted and grounded in love, or in God, may be able to comprehend with everybody, yes. all the rest of the believers, yes. what is the breadth, the yes. length, the depth, the height, and to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge, so that you can be filled with the fullness of God, the very yes. thing that we are all wanting. Yes. The yes. Yes. It's almost like he wrote this as a response to my plea. Come on. And yet it was there all the time. Yes. Praise the Lord. Another, he's saying, come to me to stay with me. Yes. yes. Not come to me for a need, not come to me for a, an issue, but come to me to stay with me. Come to me to be with me. To be one with me. John 14, verse 23. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words. And my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. Yes. His love prepared a home for us with him. Mm -hmm. He's saying, abide in this love. Abide in me. Mm -hmm. This is the last scripture, and I'll close with this. First John again, back to First John, where we started. 4, 16, and 17. 
First John 4, 16 and 17. We have known and believed the love that God has to us. God is love. He that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. Yes. yes. And we're getting to that place. I'm not predicting dates. I'm not saying it's going to happen, you know, in the immediate future. I'm just saying we're living in that time regardless where everything is pointing to this. I heard somebody say the other day, is this, a, this is a, a, a trial run for the Antichrist. Yeah. And you can look at it and see where that could possibly be. It isn't that. But it's to see how can I control? How much control can right. I have? Yeah. How much will the body of Christ relent and give in? Yeah. How much will they fight back? Mm -hmm. So how long before I can make this move? Mm -hmm. We need to stand up and say that's enough. Yeah. Right. We're not taking it anymore. And I, and I you know, like talked about the the political and the military and the go our government and so on and so forth. That's all true. But it's all based in God. It's all based yeah. in God's plan for this nation right. and for Israel and for the world to come. Right. So we need to get some we need to get some guts to stand up. We need to just <laughs> stop taking the crap that they're throwing and just saying, look, I I'm not I'm not going with this. Right. Yeah. right. I'm, I'm trusting God. Right. And you can play all the games you want to play, but you're not going to play them in my yard. Come on, exactly. Amen. So you know, I mean, we we just have to be willing to be the warriors that Come God on. created us to be. Come on, we need to put on the armor and stand up and say, "You're looking at me. You're looking at Jesus." Yes. Right. You want to mess with God again? Because I think you got the wrong, the, the short end of the stick last time. And if you want it again, just come up and bring it on. Yeah. <laughs> right. That's what God's telling us. Yes. It's time for us to stand up and quit letting the bully in the schoolyard push us around when we know he's a gutless coward and a liar. Yes. And he knows his end. You're right. And that's why he's blowing smoke all the time like a roaring lion because he knows if I keep him afraid, I got some control. If they stop fearing me, they're going to kick my butt all the way to hell. Right. That's a fact. Right. That's what the Bible teaches us. So right. we need to get that armor on and we need to stand up for the Lord and deal with this enemy. And recognize the enemy is not people. Yeah. The enemy is a spirit that yes. is manipulating people right. and using them. Yes. Right. A lot of these people that we in the natural would hate, Tim said it this morning, he loves them. Right. And we may be the opportunity for them to be saved and transformed. Right. Into another Jesus. Right. Another resurrection. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. God bless y'all. We'll have a moment all over here. Anybody that wants to come and seek the Lord, anybody that needs prayer, wants prayer, whatever, you're welcome to come. If not, God bless you. Have a great Memorial weekend. We love you. God loves you. And you are love. Yes. You are God's power in this earth. Amen. Amen. Use it. You're dismissed.